Hi everyone, it is December, no it is not, it is January, sorry, 15, 2018, How to Wreck the Environment. I'm going to go through PDFs, I'm not going to read any of many of the PDFs, I'll read a scant of a few. How to Wreck the Environment, this was a chapter in a book called Unless Peace Comes, written or published in 1968. This chapter was written by Gordon McDonald, who was an associate director of the Institute of Geophysics and Planetary Physics at the University of California, Los Angeles. And this chapter goes through the dangers of tinkering, altering, exploiting the Earth's natural processes, triggering the environmental instabilities, how the effects could be worldwide, altering the climate regionally or locally, inducing earthquakes, enhancing rain, the dangers of weather modification back in 1968. It gives a pretty good history, provides a basis of understanding of weather modification how they manipulate the weather, and what was to come back in 1968 touches on the the dangers of injecting chemicals or f any other uh, physical substance to alter the ozone, since the ozone layer is rather significant for life itself. Without an ozone layer, we die. And they have, our military has, not, not, from the individual spraying deodorant on underneath their armpit. It's the military that is ru ruining the ozone layer. And interesting here in this chapter, it talks of commonly suggested methods of melting big ice structures like Antarctica, how they can spray chemicals on the surface of the ice and it will melt the ice. Everything that is taking place is deliberate. It is not climate change, but you guys know that. They also talk about tsunamis, tsunamis, and they already developed a system for tsunami warnings. So when you look back, how about that tsunami in Indonesia where the people had no warning of it coming? Why were they not given a warning? Well, because that was a deliberate weapon, a tsunami weapon. They can create tsunamis by explosions or release of energy into the ocean. They can create and guide the tsunami. But this is the part that I wanted to get to. Brain waves around the world. Here he talks about the dangers of altering the natural energies, the natural resonance coming from the earth and what it could do to our brains, which is really not very good. One can imagine several ways in which to increase the intensity of such electrical oscillations. The number of lightning strokes per second could be enhanced by artificially increasing their original number. The natural oscillations are excited by randomly occurring strokes. The excitation of timed strokes would enhance the efficiency with which energy is injected into an oscillation. The enhanced low frequency electrical oscillations in the earth ionosphere cavity relate to possible weapon systems through a little understood aspect of brain physiology. Remember, this was back in 
eight. And just think about Obama's brain project, all the study that has taken place since 1968 on the brain to understand its physiology and to understand certain frequencies that are um, discharged in our brain. Some experiments have been done in the use of a flickering light to pull the brain's alpha rhythm into unnatural synchrony with it. The visual stimulation leads to electrical stimulation. There has also been work on direct electrical driving of the brain in experiments discussed by Norbert Wiener. And one of the reasons why I do these videos is because I want to give the information to those who do research on whatever subject. This subject in particular is mind control. But a sheet of tin is suspended from the ceiling and connected to a generator working at 10 cycles per second with large field strengths of 1 or 2 volts per centimeter oscillating at the alpha rhythm frequency. Decidedly unpleasant sensations are noted by human subjects. The Brain Research Institute of the University of California is investigating the effect of weak oscillating fields on human behavior. The field strengths in these experiments are of the order of a few hundredths of a volt per centimeter. Subjects show small but measurable degradation in performance when exposed to oscillating fields for periods of up to 15 minutes. Think about the cell phone. Think about all of the microwave, the electromagnetic frequencies pulsing from cell towers, from Gwen towers, from our Wi-Fi in our home, the smart meters, the frequencies coming off our computer screens, our TV screens, frequencies coming from smart appliances. We are so surrounded in pulsating frequencies. And then when you think about our inability to reach people, to have adult conversation, where people cut you off immediately, when you talk about certain subjects and they just degrade you by insulting you, calling you a conspiracy theorist, calling you crazy. Um, and some have left comments saying that their families want them committed for talking about geoengineering and weather modification. Something very, very strange is taking place. And I do believe that it is the result of these pulsating frequencies that we are subjected to. Now, that's not the only cause of this strange behavior, but I do think that it is a main cause. So I will link, oh, you know what? I'm going to ask you to um, find the links or find these articles just by posting the title of the PDF in a search bar. Because I, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't have the energy to go through all of these articles um, to give you the links. Now, remote behavioral influence technology evidence. This is a very long article, but it gives a tremendous amount of information, factual evidence, information studies on our military and the studies and the methods for controlling the population via the microwave electromagnetic frequencies. Here, microwave hearing. The first American to publish on the microwave hearing effect was Alan Frey in 1962. They can transmit frequencies and induce into somebody's head noises or voices. And unfortunately, so many targeted individuals are 
considered to be insane, schizophrenic, crazy. And yet the voices are being induced by these weapons that they have. And I am telling you, it is horrifying and very sad to listen to all of the targeted individuals. And there's so many on YouTube talking about their experiences. But the microwave hearing here, they're talking about how it can induce tinnitus. So the buzzing as I'm doing this video is quite loud in my head. Many people describe it as hissing or um, clicking noises, but it can also cause dizziness, nausea, can induce the effect of pins and needles. So many of you have talked about feeling like you have these sharp pins that are sticking you. Nothing is sticking you. It's the microwave frequencies that is inducing that feeling. Um, and they talk about the pulsed modulations. So I have posted a lot of video of the visual evidence that frequencies are saturating our atmosphere just by looking at all of the clouds and the ripples in the clouds that is caused by the microwave frequencies. But also the pulses when my camera is going at in and out of focus. So you can see the pulses as well. So this uh, PDF goes into an awful lot. Ultrasound transmission of voice, voice to skull, when people are actually hearing voices in their own heads. You can't hear it externally. They hear it in there, inside their mind. But this is all being induced. They know the normal brain, brain wave patterns. They know the normal brain frequencies that are subject to our, uh, or create a state of consciousness, the frequencies that can uh, determine somebody's emotionality. An acoustic, directional interference of two ultrasound beams. The cancellation leaves the carried audible sound perceivable. Now, to understand how all of this is actually done, you'd have to do a lot of study. But they have long-range acoustic devices. They can remotely induce voices into somebody's head. Target tracking technology. They can put sensors on people's clothing to track them. It's very scary technology. And they are using it. Thought reading capacity. Um, Ross Addy, electromagnetic fields, the modulation of brain tissue functions, a possible paradigm shift in biology. And Ross Addy was a big researcher on finding the frequencies to induce in a human being to alter their consciousness to alter their brain patterns so that they would think certain things and they would behave in a way that they would not ordinarily behave. Bioelectromagnetics, developments toward 
a physical biology evidence for a role of free radicals in electromagnetic field bioeffects observed effects of environmental fields in the central nervous system and this is a very very long article um, detection of extremely low frequency fields detection of amplitude or pulse modulated radio frequency microwave fields so if if this is not happening why did they spend an awful lot of time and an awful lot of money to do all of these studies experiments but this also goes into the physical changes induced by microwave frequencies calcium dependent neuro -regula regulatory mechanisms modulated by electromagnetic fields sensitivity of cerebral neurotransmitter receptors the microwave frequencies are altering our brains so even just going through this just to look at the <laughs> um, the titles of the sections or subsections effects of environmental electromagnetic fields on melatonin cycling in animals and man they know that melatonin is being depleted and hence the reason why we have an exponential increase in people with sleep disturbances it's because of these microwave frequencies depleting us of an essential uh, brain chemical melatonin targeting the human with directed energy weapons key points directed energy weapons directed energy weapons and crime perfect crime manipulated microwave oven um, intelligent antenna system psychological effects licensed kill perfect crime any of you don't believe targeted individuals when they talk about their experiences if you don't believe them that means that you've not done enough research bioeffects of selected non-lethal weapons uh, the non-lethal weapons are lethal and here we have radio frequency directed energy lasers or other light phenomena oral bioeffects so we've got ultrasound we've got microwave we've got lasers and they're using them against us US electromagnetic weapons and human rights a study of the history of US intelligence community uh, community human rights violations and continuing research in electromagnetic weapons and it's uh, I'm doing this because I had sitting on my computer for the longest time all of these PDFs and I never got around to doing a video on it so this is this is the video I can't do a video on each on each paper but at least you can see the research some of the research that I've done how the NSA harasses thousands of law-abiding Americans daily by the use of remote neural monitoring communications intelligence signals intelligence these are all sub agencies uh, signals intelligence mission of the NSA has involved evolved into a program of decoding electromagnetic frequency waves in the environment for wireless, wirelessly tapping into computers and tracking persons with the electro, electrical currents in their bodies because they do know the frequencies in our bodies domestic intelligence individual citizens occasionally targeted for surveillance by independently operating NSA personnel and here you will find 
an awful lot of evidence that our intelligence agencies are involved in the targeting of innocent, innocent citizens, not just in our own country, but in many countries around the world. I throw this in the Naval Medical Research Institute. This was a study conducted for our Navy, the reported biological phenomena, effects, and clinical manifestations attributed to microwave and radio frequency radiation. And this is 106 pages of symptoms, effects, biological, cognitive effects, psychological, mental, spiritual effects from the microwave electromagnetic frequencies that we are all now saturated in. And when you read this, yes, it's very long, but you really do get uh, a accurate picture of the use of these frequencies as a weapon and how they are being used against us. Our government, our military, the FCC knows exactly what these frequencies are inducing in all of us. And the frequencies are inducing illness, physical, mental, spiritual illness. The central nervous system effects, headaches, insomnia, restlessness, EEG changes, cranial nerve disorders, conditioned reflex disorders, seizures, convulsions, fatigue, structural alterations in the synapses, stimulation of our parasympathetic nervous system, inhibition of our sympathetic nervous system, depression, just a general bad feeling, but depression, impotence, anxiety, lack of concentration, dizziness, hypochondria, hallucinations, sleeplessness, increased irritability, decreased appetite, loss of memory, scalp sensations, increased fatigability, chest pain, tremors of the hand, blood disorders, behavioral changes, vascular disorders, metabolic disorders, gastrointestinal disorders, endocrine gland changes, DNA changes, histological changes, genetic and chromosomal changes, and miscellaneous effects, sparking between dental fillings, peculiar metallic taste in mouth, loss of hair, brittleness of hair, sensations of buzzing vibrations, pulsations, tickling about the head and ears, Copious perspiration, salvation, protrusion of tongue, changes in the operation of implanted cardiac pacemakers, changes in circadian rhythm, rhythms, our natural rhythms that, that match with the Earth's natural rhythms. And now they are artificially saturating us in these artificial frequencies that are causing all of these problems. Yes, it's very, very upsetting. In contravention of conventional wisdom, the CIA no-touch torture makes sense out of mind control allegations. This is an article and it gives you a very good history of the CIA's no-touch torture programs. Defense Science Board Task Force on Directed Energy Weapons. This is a document that gives you a good indication of all of the directed energy weapons 
in use today. Mind Control, another article, 67 pages. Gives an awful lot of very good information. If you want to do further research, Mind Control, the ultimate brave new world. Technologies for stimulating the brain and controlling the mind can have benefits, but they have a dark side that military and intelligence planners have been exploiting for decades. Mind Control Technologies presented at the Consciousness Technologies Conference. Another very good article. And it goes into an awful lot of the studies that have been conducted. Pulse microwave technology. Voice to skull. Transmission was discovered during World War II. Radar technicians were found to have a buzz. <laughs> they heard the buzz of a train of pulses being transmitted by radar equipment. When you hear the pops, the clicks, the buzzing, the hissing, they also use these microwave fre frequencies to entrain the brains of entire populations. So think about um, your own brain. What makes the difference between those who are so easily manipulated and so easily controlled by these frequencies and yet there are those of us who still have our brains though we are greatly affected by these frequencies because the effects um, they just destroy or damage our ability to concentrate, to focus, to think clearly. It takes great effort when you are sensitive to these frequencies to maintain the cognitive capabilities that you always had. But it goes into an awful lot of information about Um, the many ways in which they can control populations. Physical control of the mind. Jose Delgado. This is his book right here in PDF, PDF form. Mental Evolution. The brain and mind as functional entities. Experimental control of brain functions in behaving subjects. We all know Jose Delgado was one of the uh, leading researchers and scientists in mind control with the use of frequencies. And, oh, here I am back to how to wreck the environment. Now, I just want to show you a few articles that I came across just recently. Road Rage explains cell phone radiation lowers impulse control. Disrupts blood-brain barrier. Much of the behavior that we are seeing I do believe is related to these microwave frequencies inducing in people an aggression, anger, um, and lessening their control of their impulses. But when you think about all of the people who are on psychiatric medications that do exactly that, and then they have on top of that these microwave frequencies, 
that the coupling of the two and of course the chemicals and heavy metals that are also saturating us and that we're breathing crossing the blood-brain barrier it is one of the main reasons why we have such a sick not just physically but mentally emotionally spiritually population and cell phone addiction increasing cancer rates in Sweden well I have posted on the increase in brain tumors in Canada and how they are hiding that data from the public I've posted on increase of cancerous tumors in the UK now Sweden it's also an increase here in the United States and when you try to tell people about the dangers of these frequencies that are coming from their smartphones and they don't stop they don't they don't change their behavior to even protect their own health you can uh, surmise that the person that you're talking to is an addict these frequencies cell phones in particular come with uh, addictive qualities about them and I'm not going to go too much into it I will link below to everything but smartphone addiction creates imbalance in brain researchers have found an imbalance in the brain chemistry of young people addicted to smartphones and the internet and it has to do with the GABA and the GLX ratios all of these frequencies are affecting the natural processes in our own brains they affect the neurotransmitters they affect the synapses they affect our, our the chemicals in our brains our brains we are electromagnetic beings the way we function is based on these electromagnetic frequencies that we have within our own bodies that includes our brain so if they have us saturated in frequencies that are altering the natural rhythms of our own frequencies that can only lead to a population being very very sick their overall well-being will deteriorate that that's you can't you can't possibly think that it's going to be good but here is a study um, a study from our own government our own government and clearly it's wrong okay uh, cell phone addiction a review and in this study they talk about the dopamine the cell phone addiction being tied to the dopamine loops or hits that we get from our cell phones and that can create an addiction and I will link below to this video there's other videos there are people in the the IT field who have admitted that this is what cell phones are doing that they are addictive but here is a TED talk cell phone dopamine and development and she's talking about how cell phones affect our dopamine um, that, you know and it creates this dopamine loop and dopamine makes us feel good so I, I'm going to link below to everything I'm sorry that this isn't a great video I just wanted to put out the research that I had and I have a lot more of it actually so I may be doing other videos um, you can't find very much on Google these days 
So download what you do find. Download it. Hold on to it. And I would be surprised if you're able to find every one of these PDFs on a Google search because I really am feeling great frustration with Google how it is not what it used to be years ago. Anyway guys, I'm sorry that I can't provide the links but you have the titles. Ciao.